last year that I actually announced here on the day that I uh, launched it to get out azodicarbonamide, the yoga mat chemical out of Subway bread, finally opened people's eyes up to eating fresh isn't really eating fresh. And now people need to t- pay attention to the meat because 7.6 billion su- million subs are sold every single day by Subway. They are the largest by number of chains of restaurants, even though they're losing money just like McDonald's. I think they lost more money last year than even McDonald's uh, from the reports that I just read. And so this is really a shift in consumer perspective. And there's a whole like snowball revolution of changes happening where these corporations are starting to remove artificial food dyes. They're starting to go antibiotic free. They're starting to offer more organic options, but we've got a long way to go. And unfortunately, some of these brands have lost so much of our trust that I don't know if they'll even survive. And and really, you know, you see that with McDonald's, you see that with Subway. Um, and, and there's so many other trust issues happening with Subway as it is. And so we're really at a critical moment here where our voting with our dollars, our petitioning these companies, our making more and more people aware of these issues is really creating a shift in momentum in terms of conventional food that was poorly raised, full of toxins, to now food that is organic and real and whole. And that is really what we need to go back to. And that's creating a whole new economy for us where that food can now be exported. I've been reading how we have to import most of our organic food and the yep. and the farming associations aren't even telling farmers, hey, you can be making a lot of money with organics because there's such a culture controlled by big pharma and by the big industries to not let farmers know this. Yeah, and you know, you look at Chipotle and they're having to get some of their beef and pork from other countries because we just don't have enough here that's raised humanely, that isn't antibiotic free. And so we're you know, now outsourcing our food and we need to go back and take a look at our farmers here and see how we can change their practices from within. And that's how these type of campaigns start to do that. Once huge companies like Subway and others like McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and others who have actually that made- That scales the whole market. It's like when Walmart lunch, carries your product, the uh, it's set. I mean, we, we make them cave in, it's Alex over. Jones, We'll be back. Here are the headlines at Infowars.com. Drudge Report has them lined up uh, nicely. Cop hunting. Houston deputy shot 15 times in the back. Suspect in ambush held without bond. Sheriff says Obama started this war on police. Dangerous rhetoric as Black Lives Matter continues to chant pigs in a blanket. Cop hunting is what the suspect reportedly was out doing. And it's all directly out of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs will host the entire fourth hour today at Infowars.com forward slash show. We're bringing the fourth hour back, so affiliates are welcome to start picking that hour up. And they're going to have a man running for sheriff who's endorsed by Sheriff Arpaio, by uh, Richard Mack, who's a constitutionalist. And he's down there and give us the inside scoop on what happened and on where he sees the situation going. Bonnie Hari, the food babe, uh, is with us. I've got a bunch of medical food news, cannabis news I want to run over with her. Anthony Gucciardi's here, uh, who is our food and health reporter in studio with Bonnie Hari, uh, the food babe, launching another initiative. Uh, let me ask you this question, food babe. Talk about globalism or, or all these other things that are being pushed by the establishment. Once the people turn against them, it doesn't matter how much support they put behind it. It's over. T to me, I keep saying this, this really is the model of how to bring down so many other things that are being force-fed from the top down. Uh, all these initiatives coming to a head. I mean, sure, Monsanto shot down mandatory labeling in California and other states, but just the process of the public being educated made them go out and make their right decision anyways. So it doesn't matter if they stole those elections, stole those, those referendums, which I think they did. The evidence is overwhelming. The battle in the court of public opinion is what is going to end up bringing them down. So how do you expect this to now flesh out? What do you think the next shoe to drop is? And how do you think they're going to strike back? So I think what's happening right now is you've got an interesting situation. You've got major fast food chains losing money, 
uh, hand over fist every single quarter. You've got the conventional food sector losing money or staying stagnant. The only companies that are continuing to increase in growth or organic and natural. And when they increase in growth or they increase in uh, just consumer demand, what I see happening now is these multi-billion dollar conglomerates are actually buying up these corporations. We've seen uh, Hormel by Applegate, which is an organic, sustainable meat brand. We've got General Mills buying Annie's. We've just got Coca-Cola, who's investing in Suja Juices, that are the green juice company. And so really, these major corporations, I don't know if they'll ever be gone in terms of like the big major food corporations or, or if they're going to just continue to buy up consumers and eventually, you know, we're going to end up buying Coca-Cola products or Pepsi products or General Mills products because they're going to buy the entire organic food sector. Right now, if you look at the capital um, just collectively between Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they could buy all of the organic food system today if they wanted to. So that's pretty scary. To so that's about. how they're striking back. And, and we see that with the TPP, the multinational model. They come in, they buy them up, then they change the rules and laws so you can't keep GMO out of your country and you can't label. And so they buy it up, then they change the laws. And no matter how many companies we try to go patronize or support, they just buy those up. So that's that's how the empire is going to strike back. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's going to happen. And, and what we can do as consumers is just shape their products and hold them accountable when they do buy these different organic and natural brands to make sure they don't change. Now, some organic brands have changed dramatically when they've been bought by these bigger corporations. I'll give you an example. Campbell's bought Plum Organics, which is a baby food company, was 100% organic, and now they have non-organic meat products and dairy products in Target. So like people are buying Plum thinking it was organic or healthier, healthier than the alternative of Gerber and other things, but now they're they're watering down their food. And so it's really important for us to always stay on our toes, read ingredient labels and make sure these companies don't change their ingredients and practices after they've been bought by these major conglomerates. What are the other big angles you're looking at right now? And then I've got Anthony Gucciardi here with some breaking news to get your take on. Yeah, the other big angles that I'm looking at right now is false advertising. You know, just this morning I learned of Chipotle being sued in San Francisco because they are under the impression, consumers are under the impression that it's completely GMO free. However, their meat, some of their meat is raised with GMO feed. And then also they're still serving Coca-Cola that's full of GMOs. And so consumers are now contacting lawyers and saying, you know what, it's not all GMO free. This is, this is false advertising. And they're suing even the good guys that are trying to do the right thing. And so I've seen that start to happen, as well as I see what's happening right now within awareness that's happening in terms of understanding what's GMO free and what's not. And, and there's a lot of different false advertising going on. I'll give you another example is Boar's Head Products. This is a major meat uh, deli provider. You see it in every grocery store across America. They have signs up because they want to jump on this bandwagon of no artificial ingredients. And they have signs up that say no artificial colors. But when you look at some of their meats, they have artificial caramel coloring in it, level three and level four. That's considered a carcinogen by the National Toxicology Program that's tested these compounds within this ammonia-based dye that's widely used in the food industry. And they're adding it to meat to color meat that, you know, loses its color because it's so processed. So there's a lot of chameleon behavior going on. Absolutely. People are trying to, you know, ride this wave and say they're natural, say they're artificial free, but they're not quite there yet. And so it's up to us, you know, activists and other consumers who are becoming aware about all these different intricacies to like speak up and make sure people know about it. Anthony Gucciardi, you've got a bunch of news basically integrated into what she's saying. I do have a lot of news. And also I want to say there is a lot of deception and labeling. For example, I've pointed out before, someone can call something like an organic line. I could say Anthony's Organics, and that could just be a registered trademark. It doesn't actually mean it's an organic product. So that's another thing. I've seen products called, you know, such and such organics when it's actually not even organic ingredients in it. But I think just eating well and trying to eat organic and trying not to eat total crap, you're already better than 98% of the population. You know, just drinking clean water real purified water yeah that's one attack i hear is oh none of it's perfect you can never do it just go with everything bad that, that used to be my attitude no 
No, we change it by trying to make our lives better and others' lives better incrementally. Exactly, because listening to all this, it's super overwhel overwhelming for the average person. The average person doesn't even know really what a GMO is or how to know if they're eating GMOs. So when we talk about all these things the corporations are doing, buying up all these organic companies, which is going on, it's almost impossible to catch every little angle, even with these things like the registered trademarks where it says Joe's Organics, and it's not even organic. But just buying organic and trying your best to be healthy is key. And I think it is motivational to think about how much you're avoiding. Because look at this study. Study, GMO soy accumulates cancer-causing formaldehyde. This is a new study. In a groundbreaking new study published in the peer-reviewed journal Agricultural Sciences, researchers have found that when soy is genetically engineered, it disrupts the plant's natural ability to control stress and sparks the production of carcinogenic formaldehyde. The new research, led by MIT trained biologists, the researchers discovered that the accumulation of formaldehyde, the known carcinogen, and a dramatic depletion of glutathione, which is essential for your overall production of the liver, an antioxidant necessary for cellular detoxification is a result of genetic tinkering with soy plants. So they're messing with, with soy, modifying it. They admit they don't know what's happening. They admit they don't know what's going on. Former EPA scientists are voicing their opposition against this. Everyone is freaking out about this new study, and we're still sitting here eating it. We know it's causing formaldehyde to develop in the accumulation when they mess with the soy, but we're still eating it. That's why, like Alex was saying earlier, we're being forced to import soy from Romania, because organic soy, because people aren't buying the GMOs anymore. The house of cards is crumbling. We are defeated. Well, that's what's that. crazy. The only farmers we know, because we're in farming and ranching family business still, is organics. Real organic, and then you got to get the certifications. And there'll be farmers going out of business because all they know how to do is deal with Monsanto or Archer Daniels Midland, they don't know that the free market is the way for them out. Because you'll go to the farmer's market, you'll go to one of these, uh, you know, events where they got the blue ribbon pigs and the rest of it, the fair, and it's all sponsored by Monsanto, and it's only their farmers that are there. So they are using the ignorance of folks to continue this. And America is exceptional in that we are exceptionally unhealthy. We have exceptional amounts of GMO. Vani Hari, I've seen the statistics, but aren't we in the top two or three worst nations for additives and GMO? Don't we lead the world in a GMO toxic uh, dumping ground? No, absolutely. And we're one of the only countries that doesn't label GMOs, even though 65 other countries do. Russia, China, India, most of, uh, you know, some comp countries, I just went to Tanzania and Rwanda. They don't even allow GMOs to be grown there, and they're getting a lot of pressure to be from their neighboring countries to grow it and from Monsanto. And it's, it's you know, going to those countries that people think like people are starving and people are really worse off without GMOs, going there and actually visiting and seeing how they farm and seeing what they're doing is really inspiring because not only do they have an amazing biodiversity of so many different crops, not just corn and soy and canola, but like everything under the sun from cabbage to avocados to carrots and everything being grown there that they can, I mean, they're like, they're absolutely have the most rich soil. And if I can't even imagine the Sweet devastation potatoes, roses. that would happen. You know, most of the roses you get are from Africa. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine the devastation that would happen if they started this monoculture type crops there that would just degrade the soil um, time after time and just strip it of all that's amazing nutrients. And so it's really inspiring to see some of these countries like fight back and say no to Monsanto. And it's it's really great that that's happening. But we're we're like, you know, what's what's really crazy to me is that we are one of the countries that has the most rights out of any citizens across the globe. And the right that we don't have is the right to know what's in our food. And they go and beyond that, that, though. They'll ban our right to know what's in our food with the Dark Act, which passed the House and is now going to be voted on next month by the Senate, which says literally mandatory labeling of GMOs will be illegal. And that was pushed by the very representatives that are paid off. Yeah, that's in case a state does have a referendum and says, no, we're going to label. Yeah. The feds are saying, no, you can't. Which Texas may do. I mean, Vermont already has it, mandatory GMO labeling. So this will be the feds coming in and saying, no, you're not allowed to know if GMOs are in your food, period. And this is likely going to be passed. And everyone needs to know if their senator votes for that, that they are complete traitors to American rights. Well, you know, American it's the number one trend I saw earlier on Facebook of all billions and billions of posts. It's the number one trend right now. And it makes you wonder. 
well, gee, how are these people doing this? It's because they're obviously not acting in our best interests. Meanwhile, we have articles like Monsanto kicked out of Greece and Latvia, GM bans sweep throughout Europe. I mean, Europe is done with.